This is part 3 of Razor Pages tutorial. The common sections of a web application like the website header, footer and the navigation menu are defined in the layout view. Each Razor page will then plug in its page specific content in the layout view. We discuss the basics of layout view in this part 28 of ASP.NET Core tutorial. Both the projects that is ASP.NET Core MVC and Razor Pages support layout views. The differences are very minor. The first question that comes to our mind is should it be called a layout view or a layout page? Technically, a .cshtml file is a Razor page if it has got at page directive. Now, if we take a look at index.cshtml, which is a Razor page, it has got at page directive. So, it is this at page directive that makes a .cshtml file a razor page. Now, if we take a look at this underscore layout dot cshtml, notice it does not have the at page directive. So, technically speaking, a layout view should be called a layout view and not a layout page. We created this project using the built-in ASP.NET Core web application template. This layout view is also generated by that template. It uses Bootstrap 4 to style the web application. Notice within the head section, we have a reference to the Bootstrap CSS file. And if we scroll all the way down, just before the closing body tag, we have the references to the required script files. Here, we have reference to the Bootstrap JavaScript file and here, a reference to the jQuery script file. Notice these static assets like these two script files jQuery.min.js, bootstrap.bundle.min.js are coming from the lib folder and this lib folder is present inside this www root folder. So the CSS folder contains the CSS files, JS contains the JavaScript files and lib folder contains the libraries like bootstrap and jQuery. By default, an ASP.NET Core MVC project or a Razor Pages project will not be able to serve static files. To be able to serve static files like JavaScript, CSS and images, there are two conditions that must be met. First of all, these static assets must be present directly within this www root folder or in a subfolder underneath it. And then we also must add static files middleware to the HTTP request processing pipeline. It is the static files middleware that has the capability to serve these static assets. We add middleware to the HTTP request processing pipeline in the configure method of the startup class. And the startup class is present in this file startup.cs. We have two methods in this class. Notice when I drop this down, we have configure services and configure. We'll be revisiting these two methods several times as we progress through this course. It is this configure method that adds middleware to the HTTP request processing pipeline. Notice we are adding static files middleware right here. The order in which these middleware components are added is very important. We discussed static files middleware in detail in part 12 of our ASP.NET Core tutorial. At the moment, we are looking at the index razor page and notice this razor page has the title homepage dash razor pages tutorial. Who sets this page title? Is it the razor view or the index razor page? Well, if we take a look at the layout view, notice the common sections like HTML, head, body and the title element that sets the page title are in the layout view. But then how will this layout view know what should be the title for each individual razor page? Well, each razor page can use something like this view data to pass its page specific title. Notice in this case, this index razor page is passing home page as the title by using this dynamic property title of view data. The layout view then retrieves that value and sets it as the page title. Notice at the top on this page, we have our project brand and then these two navigation menu items, home and privacy. All these are coming from our layout view. So if we take a look at the layout view, notice our project brand is right here, which is an anchor element. And we are using two built-in tag helpers, ASP-area and ASP-page. We'll discuss areas in ASP.NET Core in our upcoming videos. This ASP-page tag helper sets the href attribute of this anchor element to this specified 
index page. If this was an ASP.NET Core MVC web application, instead of ASP-Page tag helper, we use ASP-Action and ASP-Controller tag helpers. So notice when I click on the project brand here, it displays the same index page. But then in the URL, the path slash index is not displayed because index is the default. In a Razor Pages project, we use ASP-Page tag helper to set the href attribute value of an anchor element. And if we scroll a bit more down, notice we have our application navigation menu here. Again, we are using that same ASP-Page tag helper. This is a responsive navigation menu. We'll discuss this in just a bit. But if we scroll a bit more down, notice on this script element, we're using another built-in tag helper, ASP-Append version. This tag helper provides cache busting behavior for static files like images and JavaScript files. At the moment, we're using this tag helper on the script element. We could also use it on an image element. We discussed all these built-in tag helpers in great detail in our ASP.NET Core tutorial for beginner scores from parts 35 to 40. In the layout view, notice we are calling this method render body. This is the location where each individual razor page like this index and privacy plug in their page specific content. So this layout view defines the common elements like the website header, footer, navigation menu and each individual razor page specific content is plugged in at this location where we have called render body method. A layout view can include one or more sections. A section can be optional or mandatory and that is controlled by this required boolean parameter. This script section is optional because we have set this parameter to false. These sections provide a mechanism to organize where certain page elements should be placed. For example, using this scripts section, an individual razor page can plug in custom JavaScript files. These custom JavaScript files will then be rendered by this section just before the closing body tag. We discussed sections in a layout view in great detail in part 29 of our ASP.NET Core beginners tutorial. Our application navigation menu is defined right here. At the moment, we've got two menu items, home pointing to the index razor page and privacy pointing to the privacy razor page. This is a responsive navigation menu. At the moment, we are viewing the application on a desktop. So the navigation menu is fully expanded. Now let me reduce the viewport size. Notice the navigation menu is collapsed to a hamburger menu. And when I click on it, we can see the two menu items. And when we click on any of the menu items, we go to the respective page. In addition to these menu items, we want a third menu item. And when we click that, we want to display the list of all employees. We want to place all our employees related pages in employees folder. So to this pages folder where all our razor pages live, let's add a new folder. Name it employees. Inside this folder, let's add a new razor page. On this add new scaffolded item dialog, select razor page and click add. Let's name this new razor page index. We want a page model class to be generated and we also want to use this layout file underscore layout dot CSHTML as the layout page. And this is specified as the layout page in this underscore view start file. And this file, as you can see, is present right here within the project. So let's click add to add our new razor page. There we go. We have both the files of the index razor page generated. This is the page model class and this is the display template. Let's change the text here to employees because we are going to use this razor page to display the list of employees. And then in our layout view, we want a third menu item. So let's make a copy of this and then change this sp-page tag helper to point to the index page we have in the employees folder. And then let's also change the text here to employees. Notice we now see our new navigation menu item employees. And when I click this, we see our new index razor page from the employees folder. But notice 
in the URL, we don't see the full path that is slash employees slash index. We only see slash employees. That's because index is the default. In our upcoming videos in this series, we'll discuss performing all the CRUD operations that is creating, reading, updating and deleting employees from SQL Server database using Razor Pages approach. That's it in this video. Thank you for listening.